There's Thomas. Oh, connecting to audio. Thomas, can you hear me? Yep. How are you? I'm doing, a, I'm doing great things. So we got Craig on here too. I know you know Craig. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> uh, I hope that's okay. <laughs> I'm mostly here to I'm mostly here to brag about you, Thomas. <laughs> I mean, Craig, I think you know, me and me and Craig have talked about your company for you know the last few months. He knows the company better than I do. He's been an investor for a long time. So I think yeah. he, he could bring some value to the conversation. So whatever I don't know to ask, hopefully he knows to, you know, he knows when to chime in and, and ask some good questions. Um, so as you, can, was a lot of fun. <laughs> as you can tell, I keep these very casual. I mean, it's just me and a CEO talking about their business. Um, we probably have a few people on right now that might ask some questions, but I think most people, they know that once this recording is done, I'm going to send out the, the link. So what happens is uh, about 9,000 people will get this recording as soon as it's done. And then another 30,000 people will get it in a few days. Uh, so that's kind of, you know, I, I give the paid subscribers of my newsletter first access to these interviews and then the free subscribers get it a few days later. So hopefully okay. over the next few days, 30, 40,000 uh, investors will see this. So let's jump in. Um, Talk to me about your company. What exactly do you guys do? Just assume that everyone watching this doesn't know anything about Zynex. Right. Our main product is we manufacture devices that are used for pain management. Uh, those devices are not like the, the cheap tens devices you can buy online or, or at Walgreens. They're prescription strength uh, electrotherapy devices that are used at home. And um, obviously, we've been very successful building a sales force and getting it out uh, uh, across the United States, especially in the light of the opioid crisis. That, that's extremely important. Um, but we have grown pretty much doubled orders uh, for several years in, in, in a row. Last year's revenue was um, over $80 million, uh, and we expect to uh, nearly double that revenue uh, during this year. And that is in the midst of an opioid, or, or sorry, I should say COVID pandemic. And of course, there's an opioid crisis. Um, that we are trying to uh, that, that we are trying to see if we can we can help with. Um, we also um, distribute other products that fit uh, in the space of pain management, so uh, that that are used for um, for ourselves for same core point um, to support um, rehab and and and, and pain issues. Uh, we also have another division where we have invented products uh, that are that are used to detect non-invasively detect. Uh, blood loss during surgery or, or internal bleedings in the recovery room. And I recently invented a uh, device that can um, provide early detection of sepsis, uh, two very important issues in, in hospitals. But in terms of revenue, all of our revenue comes from the, uh, the Sinex Medical Division with, with our pain management products. When would you ex expect to start seeing revenues on those other products, the, the blood flow or the blood loss and the sepsis? Um, yeah, the, uh, the, the blood volume monitors or blood loss, uh, as, as you might call it, um, maybe just a little bit at the end of the year. Okay. Um, and it might, it, it's, it's an expensive product. It's just like an ECG monitor. It's a $30,000 product that we don't need to sell that many of them for, for it to suddenly be substantial in terms of revenue. Uh, so uh, next year could be significant for us in, in, in terms of revenue. And we, s we keep staffing up in that that division, uh, we, we keep adding more clinical clinical data to it. Uh, it, it keeps looking great. And um, that is obviously the best kind of basis you have for, for a sales process as, as we roll that out. So your main product, who do you typically sell that to? Who is the customer? Is it the pain management clinics? Uh, yeah, pain management. Actually, the, the biggest group of physicians uh, we see in uh, prescribing is orthopedic surgeons. Uh, pain management comes right after that. Um, physical therapist, uh, physician's assistant. Um, we, we even see um, uh, podiatrists uh, and sometimes even chiropractors uh, prescribe this. All insurance companies pay for it. So that's very helpful. So it's, it's full, so full that, coverage from insurance companies? Yeah. Wow. And, um, it's an in, and that's because it's an industry that's been developed over the past 40 to 50 years by some very large com competitors we used to have. Um, so not only are many physicians used to prescribing this technology, but um, 
obviously insurance companies have established uh, a code for us to build for and established uh, allowable amounts. So it's a very well established industry. Then you can say there's even more demand for these products because of the opioid crisis. There are no side effects from, from our technology. And at the same time, our two very large competitors in this space uh, have had troubles with the, the compliance side of, of their business and are, are no longer our competitors. So um, all we're doing right now, we, we add as many sales reps as possible. We added a net of 300 sales reps last year, most wow. of them in the second half. And they're just barely beginning uh, to become productive. Uh, we have 500 sales reps now. <laughs> like, I, I, didn't know, I didn't know it was that many. No, this That's is exciting. like an avalanche in the making. <laughs> Revenue just started to... to I mean, if to you think up. about it, Thomas, if I'm correct, you started the year 2020 with 200 sales reps. That's right. 185 or something like that. Yeah. And finished with over 500. Yeah. Wow. So, so uh, as, as they are becoming productive, I mean, just here in the beginning, the early days of March, even February, we're like... Uh, incredible growth rates over, over last year. So, um, so it, it's slowly happening. And eventually, uh, our business model is that we provide these devices based on a prescription. Then most insurance companies want to pay for the supplies over time as they're consumed, as well as the use of the, the actual device over time instead of just a purchase. So once we get an order, it takes three years before the, the revenue actually tails off on those orders. So... Uh, we have the order growth right now. Later in the year, we'll see the revenue growth. And suddenly you'll see a much better balance between all the, the, the sales expenses we have right now because of these guys uh, we, we hired here have a, a lot of base salaries. Um, so in the second half of this year and certainly next year, you'll see a very healthy bottom line again. And that's and why on, on, on your earnings call, you talk about, I mean, obviously the revenue growth was was exceptional, I think high 70s or low 80s, but yeah. the, the order growth was over 100%, right? That, that's right, and eventually that turns into revenue, but it's just spread out over a long time. Uh, we got slowed down last year because we had April and May and, and beginning of June last year was hit uh, significantly by, uh, because of uh, COVID. Uh, there were many clinics that didn't really know what to, to do about this, this whole thing. Uh, we got back to the same uh, usual growth rates. But that means our revenue in the third and fourth quarter last year was a little lower than we expected going into the year. And as well, the first quarter here is, is a little soft. Again, it's from those orders we were missing from the second quarter last year. Um, but other than that, we've barely been impacted by, by COVID. Craig, did you want to ask a question? Well, I was going to say, um, if anything, during COVID, uh, Zynix benefited because there were a great deal of people that could be hired as sales reps, right? It was uh, an unusual circumstance that a lot of people that ordinarily wouldn't have been available were available to, you know, for Thomas to hire. So um, actually, it goes for both the of outside sales reps, uh, Craig, as well as employees here at the main office in Colorado before COVID. We had a full employment economy, and uh, it was hard to find even people to, to apply for jobs. Right. And because people being furloughed and laid off, et, et, et cetera, everything changed. So our, our, our applicants, number of applicants more than quadrupled, um, whether it was sales reps or, or um, here for the main office. And that meant we could, we could be picky about employees that, that we were hiring. And um, so the quality of em our employee base uh, has, has kept going up and improving. And that's something that's going to come back um, in, in, in the future, obviously, when we have better than uh, no, what we normally could expect in terms of the quality of the employees. Now, I've talked about this with Craig, and we were even talking about this before you came on. If I looked at just the fundamentals of Zynex, you know, the growth rates, the revenues, the margins, profitability, I would think that this would be a $50, $60 stock. It continues to blow my mind why it's still trading under 15. What is the market not getting? I mean, this stock just, it looks so undervalued. Everything you've talked about, the growth, the new sales reps, the product. The balance sheet. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah that's right. It, it's, it, it, it's frustrating it's all, for you, I'm sure. And I, I'm sure we have a number of shareholders in the stock that are getting it. Um, 
if you look at a couple of things, um, let's say you don't know the company, but uh, you might um, you might work for a hedge fund that are looking for uh, companies uh, that just looking at uh, from the outside are easy to short. You look at when we got listed on NASDAQ exactly two years ago, we got a nice bump up. We're newly listed um, and medical device company. Uh, they are typically easy shorting targets because they end up never being profitable and just raising money right. time after time. So just for that profile and the, the sharp uptick in, in price and, and the, the couple of years prior to that, it's been a nice steady growth because of our increased profitability. Um, so you have that. Then what, what's important also when, when people play a shorting game is that, that there's decent volume in the stock. So uh, a few months later, in, in June of 2019, we, um, we got included in the Russell 2000. Then about nine months later, I believe, we got included in the uh, S&P microcap 600 index. And all those things led to increased volume, simply because people got to- uh, right, have to start buying. Participate in the stock, right? And then, we, uh, we kept producing better and better financials. That all helped, helped shoot the stock up. So it was in the high 20s. Uh, at some point, I think we, we, we hit $30 a share. And um, if you just look at that graph, let's assume a computer supplied at a company that's engaged in shorting, looks at that graph, combined with newly listed on NASDAQ and medical device, um, it's an obvious shorting target. And what we have seen is that, uh, that there's so many factors, if you don't really know the fundamentals of the company, um, that point to that it's worth it putting a lot of money behind shorting the stock. So we have a lot of shorting against us. Right, so, right. Uh, you, you can say on some level, I, I really hope, I mean, when 30% of the float is, is being shorted against, I, I nearly hope right now that the Reddit crowd <laughs> can get into it. And just smoke these guys out of the water. Uh, I, I know a few of the big guys on Reddit, so I, I might have to send them a message and <laughs> yeah. tell, yeah. tell I mean, them to get to work. Because, it's pretty close because uh, I, I think we've seen with uh, Rocket that um, oh, yeah. that, that had 40% shorting against them uh, versus the float that we, we, have, we, have, we nearly have that profile that, that, that could attract the Reddit crowd. But. I mean, there are plenty of companies out there that have very little revenues, no growth, horrible margins. They just keep issuing more stock to raise more capital. If people want to go short those companies, be my guess. But yeah, Zynex, yeah. Zynex is not one of them. I mean, you guys have real products, real revenues, incredible growth. Your gross margins are right around 80%. I mean, if this was a software company with those numbers, you know, you'd be valued at 20, 30 billion dollars. So, <laughs> yeah. well, uh, we'll we'll get there. Um, obviously, right now, the, uh, the the softness of the, the first quarter that's always soft revenue wise because of uh, insurance deductibles and all those base salaries from from the new reps uh, from from the later part of last year. Um, they're obviously not making the bottom line look look that pretty, but the growth is there. We'll we'll double revenue um, from uh, from last year nearly. Oh, have uh, you have you brought on so many so many sales reps that you can get them trained before you bring these new products online? You know the sepsis monitor and the blood flow monitor. It's it's totally separate. It, it's a separate uh, sales force. So we um, we have a very small uh, sales force uh, promoting that, and we're more developing key opinion leaders in that division right now. It's a totally different call point. You got to get in the hospitals. You got to talk to anesthesiologists, uh, cardiologists, and and, and OR nurses, et cetera, and hospital ad administrators. It's a whole different call point than calling an or orthopedic surgeon and making sure that all his patients get one of these devices as, as they get out of uh, surgery. Now, how do these um, devices work? Do people take them home or do they have to go to their doctor and use them there? Um, no, uh, they're being used. Uh, so the doctor writes a prescription. We, uh, we get that faxed in to the main office in Colorado. Uh, we have a very large group of 40 or 50 people that then contact the patients immediately, typically the same day the prescription was written and just make sure the address is right and, and they consent uh, to that we'll, we'll send this device to them. We ship, we ship again, typically the same day and then um, within two days the patient has it and start, start treating. 
Um, we then contact the patient again within a day after they receive the device just to make sure they understand how to use it and, and also explain some of the uh, idiosyncrasies around you insurance insurance billing that that's going to hit them uh, it doesn't cost a patient more than $25 a month to be using uh, our device on a, on a co-pay co basis um, Jonas to take, take the sticker sock uh, out of the, out of the equation there um, yeah so patients are using it at home occasionally uh, webs help apply the device already um, right after surgery or or in the recovery room uh, and what are the typical injuries or surgeries that people are recovering from where they would use this device instead of getting loaded up on opiates? It could be anything. From, I mean, the, it's such a wide range. Anything from uh, knee or ACL surgery, ankle surgery, shoulder surgery, elbow. Um, it could be trying to help out the carpal tunnel. Um, it could be after whiplash uh, where, where you have neck pain. Jonah, Jonah I, have, I have a next wave. Thomas sent me one. We should send you one. You're a fitness buff. I don't have any of those issues, but I'm, and I'm a little bit older than you, Jonah, but if I wake up with some back pain or I've got a little nerve, something weird happened in my shoulder or whatever, I strap on my next wave and I'm telling you, I feel better from it. It's amazing. And you're a fitness guy, Jonah. I'm sure okay. you wake up with aches and pains. Oh, I'm in pain you, all the time. Something always you gotta use, my body. You got you, you to gotta <laughs> use this thing. It is, it's incredible. And I it actually feels had a great example from, from yesterday. I have a good friend. Uh, he's a professional musician. And he and I uh, and a few other people are going to go in the recording studio here in, in about a week to finish up uh, some, some of my songs. But being a professional musician, and he plays the bass, which is a very heavy instrument. His right shoulder has for years been in terrible pain. And he was so, I mean, tight yesterday right that's it that's me i'm, I'm he was in my me. office we were watching uh, english football my, my team all in london and we were watching that and i put that device on him and after after about 20 maybe 30 minutes he was like wow my shoulder hasn't been that loose and, and feeling so good for for a couple of years so for and the people he wakes up every morning with incredible pain if the people are not familiar with how these TENS machines work, what is the purpose of them? I know when you put them on, it creates like a, a twitching feeling depending on, uh, you know, what setting you're using. But it's, it's meant to increase blood flow to whatever, you know. Well, uh, there are a couple of things going on here. Let, let, let me also first make the distinct, distinction between the TENS devices you can buy online or at Walgreens. Um, they give you that kind of sensation, but that they don't okay. really work. Okay. Um, so uh, so tens, tens, main, TENS is the cheaper consumer brand, right? That's, that's right, yeah. So the main uh, component of, of this device, uh, it, it's got three main modalities in it. it it's got interferential current, uh, which is about 40 to maybe 100 times more efficient. It also has a TENS mode because there's a few things you cannot do with with uh, interferential current, uh, but it's... It, it's, it's a very high-end type of tens. And then it's got electrical muscle stimulation that contract muscles and loosen them to, uh, to, to rebuild muscle strength, for instance, again. Uh, but the interferential current um, is, is, is if, if people are familiar with tens, at least 40, if not more efficient than that. It's a higher frequency. It also uses two channels to, to really get in and get a lot deeper. Tens traditionally just works on the surface. Right, and right. The, the technique the, in terms of electrical stimulation is that uh, it hits the, the nerve pass going to the central nervous system, introduces electricity into a nerve pass that is already transporting electricity and providing information about, hey, there seems to be pain out here. So you introduce another kind of electricity to that and basically your central nervous system and your brain goes, hmm, I don't think there's any more pain here, uh, which is already then making sure you, you start moving your body more naturally, etc. So that, that helps with that. On top of that, the kind of electrical stimulation we provide increases the blood circulation, as you mentioned. And that, that, uh, that, that increases and speeds up the healing, as well as, as, as making sure that there's, that there's enough blood flow going to, to the muscles and that, uh, the, the cells in that part of the body. Um, so, so there's, there's a number of benefits that so last year, I bought one of those cheaper machines on Amazon. And you're right. It's a much more 
superficial kind of twitching feeling. It, it doesn't get deep in there like yours do. So now that I have insurance coverage through my job at Social Capital, if I go into my doctor and I want to make sure that I get prescribed one of your devices, what's the process? I go in there and say, listen, doc, you know, I, I lift weights every day. You know, my elbows hurt, my ankles hurt, my knees hurt, my shoulders hurt, my back hurts. You know, I, I need electrostimulation yeah. therapy. There's so many ways that the prescriptions can come into us. And it's typically something that our sales reps facilitate. But in your case, just take a photo of your prescription and a photo of, uh, of your insurance card. And you just uh, email, email or text me that information. I'll get it to our, uh, the, the order entry group and we'll, we'll get back to you. As okay. To get to but you, I mean, just, you know, saying that someone doesn't have your email, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. and they, and they go to their primary care physician. Is that who would, who could normally give them a prescription? Primary care physician, uh, pain management, um, even a doctor of physical therapy, which many therapists now are today can, can write a prescription for that. Yeah. And does that primary care physician have to already have a relationship with your company or how, how can that patient be sure that they get your device versus someone else's device? We don't really have any competition left. Okay. <laughs> so that's pretty easy, but there, there, there could be a 1% chance that that's a small, uh, a small competitor the, out there that, that happens to be in that clinic and they might get the order. Good for them. I mean, are there other, are there, are, there's probably doctors out there that aren't familiar with your company and your product though, right? Yeah, there's, there's some, but with the, 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 the size of our sales force now, most of them are, if, if not already familiar with it, they are yeah, that's, familiar with it. That, that's a pretty but ideally sales force. Right, but ideally they can request the next wave. They go to their doctor and say, I'd like a prescription for the next wave. I believe this will help me. Right. Absolutely. And typically what happens is uh, that the, the, the doctor will then write a prescription for it. That's right. Will this ever be a product that's available, you know, online or in retail, or does it really have to come via prescription through a medical professional? This product is, is by prescription only. So okay. it, 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 it won't be provided that way. It, it's also so powerful that it, it, it's very different from what you find in, in retail. Okay. Okay. Um, before we wrap up here, what else would you like to, to talk about? Um, well, could I just add, add something? I've been a, uh, you know, Thomas has some really long-term investors. I was introduced to him by our mutual friend, uh, Mo Peregar, um, who I think has been a, a, a shareholder, Thomas, correct me, but 15 plus years at a minimum. Yeah, since uh, 08, I think I started uh, talking okay. to him for the first time. Yeah. 13 years. Um, and, and for me, it was late 2016 that I was introduced to Thomas and I've become a shareholder and a, a believer in Thomas. And if I could just brag about Thomas a little bit, I've, inv I've been an investor for a fair amount of time. And I just think he's the rare combination of uh, an entrepreneur, which is not a natural trait to have for, for the Danish, right? Thomas and I have talked about- yeah, That's right, yeah, that's um, right. You know, Big thing in Denmark. You know, <laughs> being a risk taker and- you know, they have a very comfortable life in Denmark. And so for Thomas to come to the United States and, you know, bet it all and go through all the tough times that he did to, uh, to start this business is, is unusual for a Dane, I, I would say. But he's an unusual combination of an entrepreneur, um, an inventor. He's, he's shown that he can be an inventor, a scientist, uh, clearly a business executive. Um, he has shown that he can execute. Everything he has told me over the last four plus years that was what was going to happen around Zynex has happened, period. Um, That's all the maybe, way from the early days where I started to be, 25 years ago, I moved over here and started in a one bedroom apartment and basically bootstrapped it up to what incredible. it is today. And, and, and it's great that we have such a, a loyal following of, of, of shareholders. That, and just so people aren't familiar, I mean, Thomas, you own a large chunk of the business still, right? Um, yeah, I've sold sold some here not too long ago, um, and but I'm that's the first time 40, 46 percent. Yeah, so you but have that's a lot the first of skin time, in the game. That's the first time Thomas has sold a significant amount of stock in since 1996. I mean, the guy was entitled to reap oh, the sure. benefits of his of his hard work. The, I don't think the market understood it at the time in July that you know, he still owns so much stock and is still a believer in it. It's certainly not exiting the company by any means. But I wanted to add one last thing. I wasn't finished bragging about Thomas. It's, 
his integrity. Um, you know, an invention like the blood volume monitor was developed by him personally with his own resources. He didn't have, he wasn't required to put that into Zynex. And I said to him, you should create a new entity, frankly. It's not in my interest. I'm a Zynex shareholder. But you have every right to take your invention, put it in a new entity, take it public, raise money for it, whatever. He said, absolutely not. My Zynex shareholders stood behind me. And this is going to be an asset of Zynex. And so he has shown me time and time again that amongst all the other skills and traits he has, he has the most important one, which is integrity. Yep, I, I respect that as well. And that is, great. Yeah. That, that is a nice move by you. I mean, there are other founders out there that have developed products outside of their company. And then they go start, like Craig alluded to, they go start a separate company, raise capital, and you know it's two separate entities. I, I respect you for bringing that product into Zynex. And I, I, it's probably not being, uh, it's not giving, it's, you know, shareholders are not giving that enough credit, but hopefully in due time, uh, you know, as you guys bring that product in and start generating revenues. Um, yeah, I think you can sleep better at night. You, you live longer if you sleep at night. So <laughs> sleep better at night that way. Wait, Jonah, let's finish with one last fun thing, which is, I made an investment in a company in London. I was talking to a fellow shareholder and he was joking with me thinking I'm richer than I am. And he said, why don't you buy this fledgling European soccer club, this English soccer club? And, you know, I don't even know why I thought about it, but I thought, oh, Thomas, we've talked about soccer. He loves soccer. I forwarded the email to, soccer, to uh, Thomas and said, hey, you want to buy a fledgling English soccer club? He immediately emailed me back and said, I'm in. And I said, Thomas, I was joking. What's wrong with you? He said, no, 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 no. I'm in. I want to buy it. Thomas went ahead and bought the Charlton FC soccer club and is now the head of this incredible soccer club in England. He's, he's traveling back and forth to London when he can and has uh, goals to, to bring it back to greatness again and get it into the Premier League. And so maybe Thomas can just talk about that for a second because it's, it's an amazing thing. Yeah, I just talked to a mutual friend, Leo, uh, the attorney that uh, helped, helped put all this together for me. Just talked to him a few minutes ago. <laughs> so it's great. Yeah, it, that, that was an, uh, obviously um, most, most entertainment, live entertainment, like, like football or soccer in, in England has been hurt by, by COVID. So, so this club, partly because of that, but also because of some really weird um, ownership issues, was really struggling. It, it's been very exciting. Uh, we, we eventually, I mean, the, the whole club and the team was decimated here this summer. So we built, we built a team and they're slowly, um, slowly uh, getting better and better. They, are, they started at the bottom of the league and uh, they're now in the, the top half of the league. And I, um, I still hope we can, before the end of the season, get to a playoff position. It's, now, were it's you, very exciting. Were you a big soccer fan growing up? Yeah, yeah, I played, I played football, or soccer too, um, <laughs> and um, obviously been watching um, the, the the English Premier League um, for, for yeah, pretty much all my life. Uh, so it's uh, the good, it's the good news to be to be in it. It's it's it, a business like any other business, right? Now, can you, you can, you, good, can you put the Zynex logo on the uniforms? Yeah, except um, currently we we don't have a. Um, a, a live CE market in our products. So we're not selling in Europe. Oh, okay. So for that reason, it's probably not worth it. Um, it's more sure. important to, to just use those shirts. Uh, they're often used for, for, for company logos, so for sponsorship money. So it's more important to get some sponsorship or, money. Or maybe, op or maybe opening the investor base, right, to, to Zynex, introducing it to the European market. Yeah, it's a sock symbol. That's right, yeah. There you go. Now, uh, does Zynex sell in Canada? No, uh, very little, um, and uh, it, it's mainly because uh, we, we used to have a very good distributor up, uh, up there, but um, the owner of that company um, is, is um, unfortunately not a, not alive anymore. So that, that okay. took a hit, and um, so so we're not really active. There's so much business uh, to do here. That it's probably two years out before we start developing international business. Okay. Um, every resource we have. Um, it's more a matter of resources than, than, than actual cash because we've got plenty of cash on the balance sheet. Uh, but every resource needs to be put into making sure we support the, the growth of our, 
the sales force and the orders and being able to, to process the orders in, in a professional manner. So, so the, the, the train is now beginning to run so fast, we, we gotta be careful we don't um, run the, trail off, uh, the train off the rails. Um, so that's, that's really the next two years uh, to get us past 400 million in, in annual revenue is it's extremely critical that we just keep the eyes on the ball to, to use a, a terminology from right. baseball. Stay focused. So last and, question. And stay focused, yeah. If you are hiring a sales rep, I, I assume you're trying to hire people that come within, you know, come from the medical device industry, so they already have some strong connections? No. Not necessarily? They're the worst. They're impossible to. <laughs> Sometimes they can be successful <laughs> if they come with, with a book of business, but they, they come with so many bad habits. Um, that uh, it's actually better for us to have people that have some prior uh, business experience, preferably a little bit of sales experience, um, but otherwise uh, just smart, energetic, driven people uh, that are, what do you consider, likable. Right. Um, and so it's the likability is to get past the gatekeeper. Being driven is when you get kicked out all the time, you still keep showing up. And then being fairly smart means that you can have a decent conversation with a doctor once you get in there. That is the best trait. And we have training programs set up for the various phases of when these guys uh, come in, when they have been here for three months, et cetera, that basically are, are tailored to that type of personalities. Um, and it, it, it's working really well. So just, so you think, um, so I'm, I'm just pulling up my, my financials. So, What's your so revenue guidance for 2021 was what? Uh, just a little bit over 150 million. Okay. Okay. And I mean, then you, best and case, then, we'll obviously beat that. Right. And um, we're looking at around uh, 20 million uh, average uh, on uh, adjusted EBITDA for the year. Any any thoughts on what you could do next year, or is it too early to tell? Um, honestly, I hope to at least double those numbers. Double, Top double from the 150, line. right? Yeah. So at least 150 so, this, so this year, at least well, 300. Well, over 300 million in 2022. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I love it. So, Great quote. Uh, that was easy. I mean, right. But think about it. Right now, the stock, the stock is is possibly trading at two times next year's sales. Mm -hmm. That's insane. That's insane. Yeah. I'm going to buy. It'll, it'll, it'll catch up. <laughs> but it, it, it it's will. Just a matter of Probably not until August. I, I can only imagine when we announce the second quarter earnings and it's beginning to, well, now we can really right. see it. And then we talk about the third quarter uh, estimate. I think that's what's, when it's going to explode, yep. except uh, that market is pretty unpredictable. But. I agree. I mean, this is somewhat disconnected, but I, I, I found a company called Mohawk back in December and it was trading at about two times sales. And I just thought it was way too cheap given you know, everything that you guys have, right? Great growth, great margins. And that stock is up dramatically over the last few months. And I could, I almost guarantee that over the next six to 12 months, the market will figure out, you know, how much value is, how much value there is with this company. Uh, the valuation just yeah. makes no sense. So I bet, I bet in a year from now, I, you don't have to agree. I bet a year from now, we're talking about a, a 40 to $45 stock. That's my guess. You could be right. Well, yep. I'm, I'm doing my part to see if I can make it happen. Absolutely. Uh, I'll do my part. I can't too. control those guys on the, on the street. But other than that, I can control what happens here. <laughs> I got them. I got them for you. I'll get them under control. Okay. Thomas, thank you so much for your time today. I know you're a busy guy. Good luck with the, uh, the football club. And we'll talk soon. Yeah. Thanks, Jonah. Appreciate it. it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Greg. Bye-bye.